Okay, so this is the second bench rise since I did it in a bowl earlier. And now we're going to shape and transfer to the quote unquote lightly dusted um, bowl or baskets. Okay. Okay, so now you can see both. All right, okay. So it says using the top of both resting rounds in your hands. What? Lightly flower. Oh, lightly flower. All right. Everything, okay, everything's flowered. Um, using the bench knife, scoop up and flip over one round so the top flower side is now facing down. After flipping, if the dough is very compact and tight, use both hands. I mean, I guess it is, I don't know. Um, use both hands. to gently stretch outwards in all directions to form a slightly, a slightly larger round. I think this is what Steph was talking about. Kind of where you like pull it out. Okay. Using both hands. So I'm just kind of like pizza dough styling it. Okay, now using both hands, grab the bottom edge closest to you and fold it up to the middle, pressing gently so it sticks the kite stuck. Gently tug outward on the bottom two corners. And fold one in. Nicely and overlaps. Slightly overlaps. Take the top and fold it down over the entire round so it touches the workspace. The dough will slightly flip down over when doing this. And the result will be a folded up shape with the seam facing. Well, I mean, it's supposed to be like that, I guess. Okay, shape both hands into little cups and clip them around, keeping the seam side down, gently drag the dough towards you with your pinky fingers against the work surface. Dry, the dry surface will ever so slightly hang on to the dough this far, forming a taut outer skin. Next, rotate the dough by using both hands to slightly push away the dough while at the same time rotating it slightly. I think that's what I'm doing. Create intention, something with my pinky fingers, and then I'm just gonna repeat this, rotating and dragging until there's an even, smooth, and taut surface on the outside of the dough, but not so much that it tears. It should hold, hold itself in a round shape on the work surface. I mean, I feel like that looks pretty good. Can you see that? Okay. So there. And then, we're going to do the same thing over here. 
So we're gonna, wait, we're gonna take this, we're gonna flip it over, and then we need some little more flat spots. Oh, we're just spraying and getting little, you know, if you see a little nail polish, you just get it out. Okay, spread it out. Spread it out. Okay. And now we're going to take the bottom, fold it onto the middle till it sticks. We're gonna take the left side. I'm trying to pull that thing to the right side, and then the right side on over. And then we're gonna take the top. over I guess and then we're gonna hook and roll drag and roll whatever it is until no tears I mean I think it looks pretty good Same side up. Pinch them closed. Okay, all right. So now we're gonna use this thing to flop it in there like that. Okay, and it says if they're like this, and your dogs are freaking out. Like that. And then you pinch them. Pinch them closed. I mean, no, exactly. I mean, it's not pinch them closed. It's kind of not pinch them closed. It's kind of just maybe I'll just tuck it in there. What do you think? Just would y'all hush? I'm gonna show you what we got here. It's not pinched, okay? I'm looking at these pictures, and I'm gonna need to let me turn the page here, see if we got any. No, of course not. Okay, well, we don't have any more you know, pictures to look at, see what the hell this is supposed to look like. But all right, <clears throat> so that's what that one looks like, and rather, another janky. Okay, and we'll just do it to the next one. That's what they says. That's what they says. So that's what we gonna do. All right, we're gonna pop that one. Boom, shakalaka. All right, this one's probably, I don't know, kind of got a crater as well. So we're just gonna pinch it closed, okay? Well, this one kind of pinches. wonder... Huh. Maybe I ought to. Maybe I ought to do something. Okay. This one kind of pinches closed. So maybe I'm going to try to get this bad boy to. Oops. To do right. Okay, let's see. I'm going to pinch a little firmer. Just a little more aggressively pinch. <clears throat> oh, 
Okay. Maybe. Maybe it worked. Kinda. Pinch that mug in there. Pinch it. Pinch it. Pinch it. Pinch. 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 Okay, doke. And now it says place each basket inside a reusable plastic plastic bag and seal. And I don't have anything that's um like. I've got some, uh, oh, well, we're doing pretty good, okay. Um, I have some other, or Whole Foods, um, vegetable sacks, so we're gonna reuse. Here we go. Some Whole Foods vegetable sacks. Come on. Stretch this little mud down a little bit. All right, and it is nice and sealed. Okay, I just I put it over the top. So it's, you know, just sealed because it's not supposed to be used for this. Okay, and then on this one, let's see. So I didn't have another. Okay, so we still got to stretch it out a little bit. I didn't have another Benetton basket. So I'm using a little Pyrex glass mixing bowl and a. Uh, Poor looking tea towel. And now okay, I think it's sealed up pretty well. And it says um, proof from three PM to nine AM overnight in a refrigerator about 18 hours. Um, oh, this part is called retarding. I prefer this, so he doesn't always do this, but he prefers this because it's convenient and you can bake the next day and the dough will hold well in the refrigerator. A cold proof increases the flavor complexity through continued fermentation. While you won't see a significant rise in the dough when you pull out to bake the next day, rest assured that fermentation continued during the cold proof. All right, and then there is one, it gives a, why don't we, you know, do some experimenting. It gives a option over here to uh, bake this recipe in a single day instead of retarding or proofing at a cold temperature um switch to bake in the stove in the same day proceed with the recipe all the way up to the point where you would normally put the covered dough into the refrigerator to proof instead let the dough proof on the counter for one to three hours um if you're if your kitchen's hot AF, 74 degrees, then you can do it in um, two hours. But since mine is nice and cool, um, we'll go with three. And it says the best way to tell if the dough is ready to bake is use the poke test. And we can read more about that after the three hours. So we're gonna, we're gonna do, I'm gonna put a little, this thing just in case um we'll do this one on the counter and i'll put it over here by beverly who's in rehab and look she's about it she exploded in the oven look at old bev 
she's doing good. I was, you know, going to feed her for maybe 12 hours because apparently she wasn't mature. I learned after reading my fantastic bread book. So now I'm going to put this one in the refrigerator for overnight. And I'll let you know when I start baking the other one. Okay. Okie dokie. Later.